Greetings and welcome to a new video. In this video we will discuss the half-wave rectifier in a controlled configuration. For that we will use the tie resistor in order to control our half-wave rectifier circuit. This will be a resistive load and we will see how we can calculate the required values for this circuit in this design example. Of course we will see everything step by step in our calculations and verify these in Simulink simulations. Okay, our objective is shown here, design for an average load voltage of 50 volts, where the input is a pure sine wave, 200 sine, 120 pi t, so the frequency is 60 hertz and our amplitude is here 200 volts. The load will be a 100 ohm and the circuit is actually shown here, you see here the input voltage Vs and our load, and here you see the tie resistor where you have the gate control which will be used in order to get this 50 volt we need for our design. In addition we like to calculate here the required delay angle which is also the alpha. This is also called in the literature as the firing angle. Then we like to calculate the RMS load voltage, the average load voltage, I mean load current and also the RMS load current and the absorbed load power and the power factor finally for this design. So let's start with the calculations. Before we do that, let's first look at the waveforms. This is the waveform in general for our input. You see here the Vs. The maximum is the Vm, which is in this case 200 volts. You see the plot is given in a radians in, the, in this uh, word horizontal axis. So it's going from 0 to 2 pi, that's the full period. And the output is only activated at the alpha, you see that here, that it's actually staying zero, and then when this gate is fired, so I actually get the signal, then this output will then increase to this value and then keep the value as the input for the positive cycle, and then it is again zero. And then repeat that after the 2 pi plus alpha, actually what's shown here. Now what happens then with this VT, which is our tire resistor voltage, now that is only active before the alpha and it is then following actually the waveform also in the negative cycle for the input. Now if you take the blue and the pink waveforms on top of each other, you get actually your red curvatures or input here. So we will see how it affects our circuit analysis and also our output voltage here. Okay, let's see our calculations. First we start by defining again our general expression for the Vs, which is then here given in omega t, not in t. So that is then Vm sine omega t. So our omega t is here in total 120 pi t. Vm again 200 volts. And then the delay angle here is then calculated using this formula. That is the formula for calculating average value because that's the objective. We need to have 50 volts. This is the general formula we also have used in the previous videos where you see the 1 over 2 pi again. That's the full period for this halfway rectified circuit. Now we don't start at zero, but we start at, at this alpha, which is the delay angle we need to calculate. So then the integration goes indeed from alpha to pi. Now if you now look at the output voltage, that is also the uh, input voltage for this part, so we can take that exact same expression for the input. Now we need to evaluate this integral, so that is actually shown here, so we take this and goes in here. Now we get actually a general expression. First we evaluate this part, we can of course take this Vm out of the integral, and then you have now this sine omega t integrated, that you get this expression. And now you have this VO, which is then Vm over 2 pi, and then first the pi substituted in this, and then minus the alpha substituted in this here, and you get here this expression. Now the cosine of a pi is minus one, so it will be then minus minus one will be a one, and then plus here, because minus minus, cosine of alpha. That's actually the expression here. So this is the general expression for every halfway rectified circuit in this configuration where you calculate now the alpha using the required VO which is our average load voltage. So we can rewrite this, so how do we do that? We just multiply now left and right side by 2 pi, so that's actually what you see here, divide by Vm, then you have actually only 1 plus cosine alpha left on the right side and then you do minus 1 
And then in order to get this alpha, you need to do the arc cosine, so the inverse of the cosine, and then you have this expression. So we know the VO, so that's what we need, 50. We know the VM, which is 200. And then we can calculate here what it should be, and that's actually shown here, and it should be then here in radians 0 0.9633. In degrees, you can calculate that by doing this times 180 degrees divided by pi, you get here 55.90 degrees. Okay, now this is now the angle, so this is the delay angle we need to wait before we fire this thyristor gate node. The RMS load voltage, how do we do that? This is actually again similar to what we have done before. Again, the definition, so the square root of 1 over 2 pi, the integration now again starting from alpha to pi, and we know the alpha now. And now again, we need to square our output voltage. Now we know again the output voltage is our input voltage for that part of the period. So we can again copy that same expression. Again, we get here now the evaluation after some steps. That's actually what you see here. You see here indeed the VM, the alpha here, and also the sine expression in this alpha. So when you substitute here the values, you get here now, you need to do that here in radians if you want to work it out. Then you get here 91.79 volts. This is the RMS load voltage. Next question is the average load current here, which is IO, that can be calculated using the required average load voltage, divided by the resistor only, that is then actually here 0 0.5 amps. The RMS load current is also done similarly. We know the RMS load voltage, so use actually Ohm's law, divide by the resistor, that will be then here 0 0.9179 amps. The absorbed power can be calculated by the formula it's shown here, so you can use the square of the RMS load voltage and divide by the resistor, or you can square the RMS load current and times the resistor. That will result in the same value here, which is here 84.25 watts. The final one is the power factor that is defined as the load power divided by the apparent power here, which is the S, and that is calculated using the RMS source voltage times the RMS source current. And the RMS source current is also equal to the RMS load current because we have a series circuit here. So that means that's also the same as 0 0.9179 amps. And RMS load voltage is just the peak value divided by the square root of 2 because this is a pure sine wave for our input that will result in this 141.4 volts approximately. Now taking these together in this formula so then we have here the product that will result in 129.8 volt amperes. Now substitute that in this formula using also the value from question E, and that will then result in 0 0.65 approximately or 0 0.649 as a power factor. Okay, now we have calculated everything. Let's now go to the simulation result and check our uh, results. This is the circuit we have in the simulator. You see here the AC voltage source of 200 sine 120 pi t. This is the tire resistor, and this is the, uh, the gating uh, signal. So it's actually what we uh, will discuss shortly. You see also here the resistor of 100 ohms and also some meters, so voltmeter here, voltmeter there, the current meter here, and also the voltmeter there for the source voltage. We also have the scope here, so the pictures will be presented shortly. Let's go one by one. We have here the average load voltage, what we wanted, that's actually the line here, which is then going from this mean block, which is then averaging that, in order to calculate that, what is actually shown here is 50, so it's actually what we want, so this is indeed as we want it. This is the RMS load voltage, we have actually also calculated that, that's also correct. This is the average load current, just 0.5 is also correct, and here is the RMS load current also. So average load current, RMS load current, average load voltage, and RMS load voltage. So everything is according to our calculations. And this pulse generator here, pulse voltage, is given by this uh, initial value of zero. So you type here zero and then you give a convenient value of five that will then turn on this gate. And this pulse time delay, which is then TD, is calculated using this alpha, which is in this case what we have is 55.90 degrees, divided by 360, and also by 60 Hertz as our operating frequency, that will result in 250 
555 milliseconds, which is actually what you see here approximately. So you need to type in here in seconds and not in radians. And this is also the rise time and the fall time. I take here one nano just to make it uh, yeah, pretty close to ideal. And the pulse width must be not that wide because in order to get this gating, you need to just give it and then you disappear. That's actually what you see here as one milliseconds. And the pulse period here in this case is one over 60, which is our frequency of this signal. So we see here indeed, as we have discussed here, our value. So in order to, we have here everything according to calculations. Okay, let's also look at the waveforms in the symbolink, so the plots. You see here the input voltage, source voltage, the thyristor voltage, the output voltage, the load voltage, and also load current. So four waveforms. You see here the time for the thyristor. You see here when it actually fires, because then the load voltage comes up. That's this uh, cyan color. And at this point, it's actually, it stops. So you actually see here this in this encircled point. That is indeed 2.556 milliseconds. That's actually when this first cursor is happening. That's actually the firing angle or the alpha. And you can also calculate that by using this and convert that to the radians using this formula. So we know the alpha needs to be given in the radians. So we can say omega times t, which is this t, and then 2 pi times 60, which is our omega, which is our operating frequency, 120 pi, times this, which is from the seconds here, and you get here 0 0.9636 radians, which is very close to what we also have calculated. And that was also what we have calculated, as you can see actually here that these are indeed very close to each other. So indeed, again, according to specifications and are also according to calculations. All right, what's our example? Considering the whole phase rectifier in a controlled configuration, we use the thyristor circuit to control the gate of the thyristor in order to create this average load voltage of 50 volts. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.